on stage tonight, and we purposely put on the program that it was not appropriate for anyone under 10, uh, because there is some violence. So you look up in the corner, you see that little thing up there. They put on the TV screen, so have to imagine it. You have to use your imagination on our curtains. We have no curtains, so we're going to use a light curtain. There are three scenes in each act. They will end with blackouts. Uh, and there will be a 15 minute intermission between the two acts. It's a two act show with three scenes in each of the acts. Uh, we've had a good time uh, putting this together. We've enjoyed it. And we hope you enjoy watching it tonight as much as we have in preparing it. Thank you.
what that's about. That's a booth me job. I've called every day. Sorry for the intrusion, Mr. Bellamy. And I told Krieger you wouldn't be able to see him for some time. It was quite fine, and he did. You've got your toadies well trained. If I listened to them, I'd still be standing on the doormat, hat in hand. And that ain't my style. Mm -hmm. You. Yes, sir. Out. Yes, sir. When you're told a gentleman hasn't the time to see you, it's rude to insist. If it's bowing and crawling you want, Sabini's your man, not me. Why are you here? As if you didn't know. Well? <coughs> He's a sly one, that Savini. I don't care for his ears. And I don't much care for his eyes, either. I know how to handle cobras like Savini. I need money, and I need it now. And you'll get your monthly pension when it's due, and not before. You wouldn't be paying it if you didn't think my silence was worth it. That sounds like a threat. You take it any way you want. But I'm telling you this, Charles Krieger ain't going to be ruined. I've sunk every penny into mining and land shares, and I'm finished if I can't back them up. You should have come to me for advice. The market is no place for amateurs. For all I know, you might be behind them shares taking a dive. Don't be a fool. Wouldn't be the first time you were out to destroy another man. Or a woman. You shut your twisted mouth. I'll shut it for you. No need for bad blood between us. We've come too far for that. One large check. One very large check, and I'm off your back for good. And I'll decide when you're off my back! I swim with the tide, or I sink with them shares. I'm warning you! <laughs> that won't do either one of us any good. Mr. Bellamy, sir. Put that thing away! Mr. Bellamy? Come in, Mrs. Colster. It's the American newspaper, Mom. He's in the hallway. <laughs> Come on in, Spike. <clears throat> getting into this joint is tougher than getting into Buckingham Palace. <laughs> after a ghost story, Spike? It's a story you're after. I'll give you something that'll make a sensation. You come to my house. Rose Cottage. Field Road. New Barnett. Fine. When? A couple hours' time. Mr. Krieger. I'll make you pay. And not in dollars and cents, either. Got a pension. You wouldn't want to lose it, would you? Have I come at a bad time? <laughs> what was that, Spike? <laughs> what was that, monkey? Man once did me a favor. Wants to borrow money. Friendship always comes to that. That's why it's best not to have friends. What was that mumbo jumbo about a sensational story? That uh, probably wanted to say something nasty about me. <laughs> well, if I don't come back with a decent yard for the Sunday supplement, I'm going to be booted off the road. Editor didn't want to take on an American in the first place. I only got the job because I told him I could get into places he couldn't. You're my prime example. <laughs> Thinks I make good coffee, does he? Well, he's already run you to earth and print half a dozen times. A Chicago tycoon, a roughneck, uh, made millions in a uh, building, uh, living in a regular castle for eight years. He wants to know if you're out for publicity. Is the green archer a ghost or a stunt? Your editor's been listening to foolish servants. What's the real lowdown on this ghost? You ought to talk to Mrs. Colster. You know my secretary, Savini. He's good at picking things. Pockets and locks, mostly. How do you do, sir? <laughs> I do okay. 
Come in, Mrs. Cole's turn. <laughs> One of these days, you're going to fall flat on your inquisitive face and break your nose. I was only about my duties, polishing the doorknob. <laughs> he wants to know about Queen Archer. You're the historian, you tell us. It's only a legend. Well, you're going to stare at it or read it. Cough it out. Dear editor of the London Globe. Hurry it up. The green author has appeared at Gar Castle. Mr. Wilkes, the butler, saw him. The green archer went into Mr. Bellamy's room and left the door open. Also, he's been seen on the grounds. Mr. Bellamy says they'll fire anyone who talks about it, but all the servants are leaving. Well, I know it's in the letter, but what the better can you tell me about the green archer? Your medication, Mr. Bellamy. What'd you put in it? I told you, sir, your medication. Taste it. But I'm not ill, sir. <laughs> Taste it. Wicked stuff, ain't it, Savini? I have tasted better. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm not going to drink it out of a dirty glass. <laughs> <laughs> There's a box. Came in this morning. Fetch it in here. I'm waiting. The Green Archer was at one time the most famous ghost in England. Mrs. Colstern has lived in these parts for years. Every school child in Berkshire knows the legend. The original Archer was hanged by an owner of Gar Castle in 1497. Now we're getting someplace. He was hanged for stealing deer. Served him right. You see that beam? That oaken beam? Uh-huh. What about it? That's where they swung him. <laughs> For hundreds of years, the Green Archer has haunted Gar Castle, seeking revenge. You ever see him? No. If I can believe this letter, you're short on staff. Aha, then this letter isn't that phony. Some silly girl swore she saw the Green Archer talk like that spreads. Foolish lot of servants. You cook up a ghost and they all start to pack. And better off without him. You're not afraid, Mrs. Colster. It's not the dead who do one harm, Mr. Holland. It's the living. <laughs> You've told your story, now get out. Yes, sir. The Globe has a kind of decent ghost story in mind. Why don't you stay here for a few days, Spike? You mean it? You know what I you know I mean what I say. I always mean what I say. You want a good ghost story, don't you? You have. Oh, I didn't realize you were in conference. Always creeping about. Sure weighs enough. It's not too heavy, is it? I'll manage. Where do you want it? Up in the tower room. It's locked. It's a good start. Servants scared by villainous Robin Hood. I uh, wouldn't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> Have you ever seen the archer? Do I look like the sort of man who would see a ghost? Well, not in the States, maybe, but England's different. This whole place is full of problems. How long has it been since you were stateside? In Chicago. Six months. I hadn't been back in years. I want to hear all about it. Go on, we'll talk later. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll talk about it later. Thanks for the hospitality. <laughs> oh, 
No need to bite the girl's head off. I'd appreciate it, Mr. Holland, if you didn't encourage Lily in any foolishness. She's not the brightest girl in Berkshire. She's a pretty thing. I wasn't speaking of her appearance. I was referring to her intelligence. What there is of it. I've met Dummer. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> She's liable to say anything that pops into her head. And I wouldn't want you to write anything that would cause the child to lose her employment. You are shy on help. The interviews are being conducted. We <coughs> have a full stop shortly. When will you be leaving? You don't like me much, do you? <laughs> I'll leave when Bellamy boots me out, and no sooner. What's with those weeks? Mr. Bellamy is expecting guests. He's instructed me to prepare rooms. Must be that guy you're showing around the place. Uh, I didn't catch his name. You'll get no information from me. I'm no Lily. Don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Spike. Thought we might see you on our walk. Well, I did want to intrude. I uh, figured you might be uh, speaking of business or something. This is John Wood from Belgium. Spike Hall. He's a newspaper man. Be careful what you say in front of him. Be careful what you might say. You say something stupid, you'll end up in the, sound like a village idiot. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Holland. Oh, likewise. Spike's the name. There'll be a uh, Mrs. Holland, your daughter, all right? Let me know as soon as they get here. Very good, sir. You'll want to meet them, Spike. <laughs> They're American. <laughs> I'm American, you're American, they're American. I don't think there are any Englishmen left. Oh, I'm an Englishman. Well, I thought I heard Belgium. That's where I live, but I was born in Cornwall. <laughs> Chicago's my hometown. That's why I keep old Spike here around. He's only been the city of my past. Oh, not a missing link, I hope. <laughs> <coughs> Did the Green Archer murder Krieger? Uh, I only phone in the story. Someone else writes to leave. Mysterious assassination follows quarrel with owner of Ghost Ridden Castle. The readers like a bit of color. <laughs> it's made the color green. The readers also like baloney. Who is the Green Archer of Gare? In what way is he associated with the assassination of Charles Krieger? The ex guard laid a Pentonville prison. That was the man who was murdered? Yeah. I discovered the corpse. These are the questions which Scotland Yard are asking. Krieger was found dead in the castle garden yesterday by a reporter of the London Globe. After a violent quarrel with Abel Bellamy, the Chicago millionaire whose castle was haunted by the Green Archer. Krieger was killed by a green arrow, an exact replica of the arrows that were in use 600 years ago. You have to admit, that story does have appeal. <laughs> so it is breathing. <laughs> Perhaps we should talk later? Krieger had enemies. Plenty. He was the prison whip. The prison what? For certain crimes in this country, they administer the, the whip. Cat and eye tails. That was Krieger's job. I imagine the murderer was a man who had, who had been in the hands of Krieger and waited his chance for revenge. Lurid stuff, but why an arrow? Hmm. I think that's why they call news newspaper sensationalism, isn't that right, Spike? Hey, I didn't plant that arrow. <laughs> Don't be modest. I owe Chicago a few favors. You're the beneficiary. If you want a real story, Wood here is coming. Human interest. About the archer? <laughs> no, I'm in the baby business. That's a business? <laughs> Orphans and abandoned children. <laughs> What does that have to do with Gar Castle? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were busy. Creeping around again, Savini. Well, I have the other box. You said that I should fetch it up. Bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> Since the castle's up, 
for sale. I thought I should come and have a look. Uh, up for sale? You print that in the London Globe and you're going to regret it. I won't squeak it if you say no. Beg pardon, Mrs. Bellman? What is it? The gentleman's room is ready. We'll talk in the morning. Perhaps if I had some idea of the asking price. Well, we'll talk in the morning, my dear boy, in the morning. The board of directors has been looking for a new location for quite some time. Gar Castle, a home for orphans. What next? <laughs> <laughs> That's a new wrinkle, up for sale. Did you know about that? No, but it don't surprise me. The only likes playing his games. He gets tired of lugging them boxes up and down the stairs. He only has me do it if he likes to see me sweat. You ever see him? Would? I laid eyes on him for the first time today. No, not him. The green archer. You get this straight, Holland. There's two kinds of people Julius Savini hates, coppers and newspaper men. Why sharpen your teeth on me? If I catch you nosing around my private business, you'll wish you were back in America. Savini! I thought you'd be talking to Mr. Wood. <laughs> Don't pay you to think. You, out. Whatever you say. Spike. Yeah? That newspaper account. About Krieger being a prison guard, where'd you get that? Well, I didn't. The rewrite desk must have pulled it from the morgue files. Yeah, right, Spike. Something I want you to do. <laughs> Not more boxes. <laughs> Why don't you bring your wife up here? Why? Maybe I need a secretary who can type. If I remember correctly, Faye could handle that. Uh, you're up to something. I don't know what it is, but I will not get Faye. You'll do as I say, Julius. I will not get Faye. You won't? Easy with that thing. You want me to be easy? You do as I say. All right, all right, you win. You win. <laughs> I always win, Julius. You know that. It's not good to make me angry. Never know what I'm going to do. I can go now? Yes. Sabini, don't get any ideas about running out on me. I have connections. It's too bad you've never been in Chicago. They have a very unusual footwear there. <laughs> Not very stylish, but durable. It's made out of cement. <laughs> What's this? My dear, won't we be in the way? Don't walk 
cooperate, you know what will happen. You have no right to torment me like this. It's wicked. Shall I make that phone call? No, no. Then you better get control of yourself. Yes, sir. That's better. The man from the agency is here. What agency? Happy domestic help. <laughs> <laughs> for Mr. Wilkes' position. Ancient, I suppose. Not in the least. <coughs> What's his name? Phillips. Show him in. Let's take a look at him. Yes, sir.
That should be the law. Don't you agree, Mrs. Howard? Here you are, Mother. Miss Howard, pleased to meet you coming right this way. So glad you're able to accept my invitation for the weekend. Well, since we're renting your cottage, we were delighted to accept. Neighbors should get to know one another. I trust the leasing fee was agreeable. Barely blinked at the place. Valerie knows what she wants. It's the only cottage we looked at before we told the rental agent that we'd take it. Though I must be honest, the lady's manor is not in the best of condition. Dry rot in the walls. Plumbing's not all it should be. Though it hasn't been lived in for years, it, you'll find it's in very good construction. Well, I've always wanted a lovely old cottage somewhere in Berkshire. I'm not much of a city girl. We're pleased Ladies Manor came on the market. Only for leasing. I could never sell any part of Gar Castle. Ah, my secretary, Savini. Meet our new neighbors. Mrs. Howard and her daughter, Valerie. They're Americans, like me. How do you do, ladies? Hello, Mr. Savini. Finish with your entries. Your shares in Canadian copper have taken quite a jump, sir. <laughs> I'm something of a King Midas. Everything I touch turns to gold. Or copper. You have a quick wit, Miss Howard.
pay what I'm asking for, ladies' man. I'm not most people. I can see that. Must be close to seven o'clock. There you are. Where are you late? Seven o'clock, sir. I know that. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. What's the special to the house this evening? Punish you. You have punished me a thousand times over. 
Not enough. Never enough. Do you recall the last time I came to you, you spit at me? Do you remember what you called me? A brute. An animal. A devil. I vow that you regret those words to your dying day. I have regretted it. My only pleasure now is in punishing you over and over again. I've had valeries from wide for sound. You'll be able to hear your daughter's voice. No! Hear her moving about. Stop it! Knowing all the time she's so close. Stop! Leave her alone! What? I'll, I'll get the police! You'll do no such thing! No. Give me that phone! No! Give it to me! It's all because of you. You were the only setback in my career. Yes, I destroyed my brother. And I took your infant and I destroyed your son. Do your worst, David Bellamy. There was a time I prayed your heart would soften, but no more. You are a brute. Stop. Devil. Shut up. Animal. Nina. Looks like another call to happy domestic help. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Elaine. Look on the bright side of things. Valerie has come for a visit. Valerie is here <laughs> at Gar Castle. <laughs> Archer would show up. I 
like to get a picture. <laughs> Phillips! Have you seen Mr. Bellamy this morning? Down by the kennel, sir. Mr. Bellamy is purchasing dogs. We're discussing terms with the trainer. What do I tell you? Bellamy's galloping off in all directions. Dogs. Does he hunt? Beats me. I'd like to have a look at those dogs. What a good idea. Valerie? I'm not fond of dogs, but you can go along. Next thing you know, he'll be putting up a Christmas tree. <coughs> Everything you've read, Valerie. 
of money, <coughs> people who think I've done them an injustice. If people were merely demented, I keep letters like this. What? They amuse me. People amuse me. You're amusing me now. A thief stole some of my letters. I can't help how thieves think. I don't know where your mother is. If she isn't already dead and in your grave. Then you did know her. I've known a great many people in my time. And if I did know where your mother was, it would be no business of mine to tell you. I would guess she's dead. Well, I don't believe that. Believe what you choose. People you lose trace of generally are dead. There's no hiding place like the grave. If you know something, you've got to tell me. <clears throat> you've got foolish ideas in your head, Valerie. That comes from reading stolen letters, from dealing with criminal types like Savini. How much did he take you for? That's my concern. If you saw a letter that you suspect was from your mother, it would be easy enough to find her, wouldn't it? Since I was 17, I searched and hired private investigators. And there was nothing until Savini sent me this letter. It reads, you have beaten me. Give me back the child you have taken from me. I am broken in heart and spirit by your never-ending persecution. You have taken everything I have, robbed me of all that is dear, and I have no desire to live. It's signed, Elaine Held. That could be anyone's mother. Here, scrawled underneath it's written, won't you be generous and tell me where I can find Valerie? This was written a little over eight years ago. The date is quite clear. I suggest you confront Savini. How do you know he didn't write that gibberish himself? You'll have to excuse me. You're going to be a very interesting neighbor. Within the law and out. 
Hey, who are you calling a criminal type? You. I didn't come here to listen to your insults. You came here because I wanted you here. Sit down. Don't raise your voice for me. Sit down. Afraid that you have to what he says. <laughs> <laughs> If I tipped off the police as to your whereabouts, today, they'd be interested in talking with you. Both you and Julius here were mixed up with a bad gang. All pinched for clumsiness. Except you two. Your friends have kept their mouths shut. I might not be so obliging. You don't scare me. Julius is afraid of you. I'm not. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> I tell you, this Bellamy. You harm my husband in any way, and I will get even. She don't mean half of what she says, Mr. Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. Faye's a remarkable woman. And what she sees in a worm like you escapes me. I suspect Faye likes weak men. Oh, I ain't so bad. I ain't so bad. <laughs> How much have you stolen from me, Faye? What are you talking about? <laughs> you and Julius have built up quite a tiny sum here. Ten pounds here, five pounds there. Here a letter, there a letter. Uh, I never stole a half penny from you, Mr. Bellamy. Ha! You didn't steal the collar button of a department store dummy! What are you going to do about it? For the moment, nothing. I need your help for a few days. You two behave yourselves, and I might forget what you two have stolen from me. Oh, but I'm innocent. So was Jack the Ripper. Well, all right. I'll go along. Where's the typewriter? Later. Yes, sir? <coughs> this is Mrs. Savini. She'll be staying with us for a few days. Cut another cast. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I must have forgotten myself. Mine. Guy Castle hasn't had this many people inside since they had the green archer. You go with Lily. I'll come with you. You stay. I'll just keep him a minute. <laughs> Honest, Mr. Bellamy, I didn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to keep your eyes on that new butler. Phillips? That's him. I checked him out. He's not from Happy Domestic Help. They describe him as a fat, short Welchman. The police? That's my guess. Well, that John Wood, you know, he could be a phony too. Scotland Yard even. I inquired about him thoroughly. He's been with that social agency for years. Well, what are you going to do about Phillips? <laughs> You'll see. Go on, get out of here. Green Archer. Did you get it? Yeah. Lost it in the shadows. 
that legend knows more about this castle than I do. How's Mrs. Hell? We must have stopped her heart. She fainted when she saw me. I don't think she appreciates our first theatricals. <laughs> no, why? Yeah, you gave a brilliant performance. The music hall lost quite a star when you took up housekeeping. I don't think I have to worry about a ghost anymore. You said it that way. There, on the carpet, blood. I wounded him. Got him in the hand. Ghosts don't flee, Mrs. Cole Stern. The green archer is flesh and blood. And by tonight, <laughs> you'll be in my nets. <laughs> Hey, Johnny boy, you don't want to miss your plane. You see Mr. Wood? No, I haven't. He said he'd meet me in here. Why don't you ask Phillips? What's with the suitcase? You going someplace? I ain't staying here. Am I mistaken, or do I feel a cold chill coming from your direction? I wouldn't know, I'm sure. Well, come on, Penelope, what's wrong? If you must know, I've been given the sack. You're fired? It's not fair. Not even so much as a two weeks' notice. What happened? How should I know? One minute I'm polishing a spoon, next I'm packing. I'm waiting to see Mr. Bellamy. I ain't leaving till I had my say. Like that, like that, 
Those fires we need looking after. Your medication, Mr. Bellamy, it's time. Get it myself later. Spike, I think you better get back to London. Tell your editor the story was a hoax. Well, Krieger was no hoax. Talking about the Green Archer. I'm pulling the walk on that. Huh. The guy never knows where he stands with you. Been here for two days. Don't push your luck. <clears throat> Ready, Spike? Yeah. Sorry about the misunderstanding, John, but many people dislike you. Oh, sir, what a thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think they ran that phony newspaper advertisement to cause me some trouble. Malicious mischief, I think that's what the coppers call it. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your hospitality and your patience. Not at all, my boy, not at all. Get moving, Spike. Well, I only hope my editor gives me two months' wages. That chance. <laughs> did you tell the ladies where to have tea in here? Did you tell Savini? I did, but I forgot to tell Phillips. Then you better get to it. I can't do Lily's work as well as my own. You expect too much from me. Don't worry, Mrs. Colster. In a little while, your problems will soon be over. You'll get your notice. You mean it? Would I lie? <laughs> Mrs. Colston, have you seen Valerie? No, I haven't. I looked in every room that was open. I kept calling her name. It sounded like an echo. I appreciate that, Mrs. Sabine. That's very kind of you. I can't imagine what you You seem really blurry. How long has she been gone? A few hours. That's not so long. Maybe she went into the village and took a hike. The last time I saw her, she was speaking with Mr. Bellamy in here. I see. He'll be with you in a moment. Julius is searching the grounds. Maybe she went to see that place you're leasing. Ladies there. Yes. It, it isn't like Valerie to go off like this. She'll turn up. Sit down, Mrs. Howard. You're falling apart at the seams. I guess I am making too much of this. Here's Mr. Savini now. Any sign of her? No, I'm afraid not. Well, maybe she took the car and went for a drive. <coughs> Valerie can't drive. Well, looks like a gathering of the clan. <coughs> what would Mary Old England do without tea time? <laughs> Who's been messing with my guests? I, I tell you, don't bitch. Keep your mitts off. I can't find a typewriter in this place. I'll rent you one. You rang, sir? We're going to take our tea in here. I hate going downstairs. Mr. Bellamy doesn't like to leave his citadel. Takes all his meals in here. From what the maid tells me, he eats enough for two. What? What? Nothing, nothing. I'll help you, Phillips. That used to be Lily's job. It'll be about 20 minutes, sir. We'll ask you for the time. Come here. Phillips, what happened to your hand? The dogs, sir. <laughs> dogs, Phillips? Those Rottweilers you purchased? They're not overly friendly. I went to Pat one in a bit. Best to keep your nose out of places where it don't belong. Or your hand might get it shot off. Oh, what is that? What's what? I heard something. So did I. Valerie? It's, it's coming from behind the top of the street. Savini, give me a hand. Is it Valerie? Yes. Oh. Get on that chair. Oh. Is she, is she right? Oh, I can breathe again. Some brandy. No, I'm all right. You're sure? I'm quite all right. What happened to you? Well, I was on the tower stairs, and I heard something, and there he was, in the shadows. Who? Oh, the green archer. You saw the archer? Well, it was only for a brief moment. When I woke up, I was in the passageway with my hands tied and my mouth gagged. We shouldn't have come here. Valerie, you were going to get our things and leave at once. No, don't you see? That's what he wants. He won't succeed. You mean the ghost is real? Oh, I ain't never seen him. Are you positive? 
positive you're all right, dear. Outside of fainting and waking up in that damp passageway, I couldn't be better. I don't scare off easily. You're one tough young lady. Phillips, mind your tongue. You could have been in there for hours. Fun and games are over. Phillips, stop forgetting yourself. He's not Mr. Phillips. Well, who are you? My name is James Featherstone. I'm a private investigator, but I work closely with Scotland Yard. Papa. The police will be here today with a warrant to search our castle. <laughs> you won't like that, will you, Bellamy? But where is he? He was here a moment ago. There's no need for alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I 
given. Going after each other, Bellum, it's the enemy. Yes, yeah. Isn't there any way we can signal for help? Oh, I suppose we could fly a flag upside down from the tower. The police will be here at any time. Yeah, but they're going to know anything about Bellamy planning to blow up the place. What an idiot. Bellamy? No, each and every one of us. The telephone. Hello? 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 Dead. He's been busy. <laughs> Bellamy, that fox. I wonder what else he's been up to. He's been working in the dungeon, night after night, chipping away at the masonry and calling me Mrs. Hell, making the name sound like a sin. I don't get it anyway. If you're Bellamy's sister-in-law, how come your name is Hell? After my husband's death and Bellamy's disappearance, I had only my son to live for, Michael Jr. I never told him the truth about his sister. I said she died in infancy. I was afraid he'd search for her. Abel would follow, cut him down. We moved to England and I watched my son grow into a fine young man. But Bellamy followed me. To strike at me, he went after Michael. Had a man plant stolen jewelry on him, a necklace. The owner pressed charges. That's a favorite trick of Bellamy's. That's how he got my son under his thumb. Valerie's brother was treated viciously in prison. Abel took pleasure in telling me how he was punished for the slightest infraction of the rule. Punished by Krieger, no doubt. It was also Krieger who planted the jewelry and testified against Michael. Abel's been paying him off for years. Who did your son get out of prison? Finally. Then he joined the military and died in a plane accident. Valerie gone, Michael Jr. dead. And it was only a matter of time before he came for me. That's why I changed my name to Lane Held and dropped from sight. But it was no good. Valerie <coughs> found me, brought me here. For eight years, that's been my home. The hope that you were still alive is the only thing that's kept me going. Without that hope, I would have been driven mad. Well, that would have made for two lunatics in God Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're crazy in my time, but that Abel Bellman leaves the pack and wears the crown. This tailor should make him up a straitjacket. <laughs> Revenge. It's the only thing he lives for. That and torments of people. I don't believe he's human. Oh, human. He always knew where you were. He had your address in America all the time. You'd have been better off I never sent you them letters. That's a stupid thing to say. Ease off, babe. Parking each other isn't going to help. We need our wit. Well, why are we masquerading with the Green Archer? What's he got to do with any of this? Bellamy let Spike Holland come here, didn't he? He was after publicity for some reason. The Green Archer was a good way to get it. Publicity for what? How should I know? You're the detective. You could have somebody dress up as the ghost. Scaring servants was fun for Bellamy. You're wrong. He was terrified of the Green Archer. Uh, I still say he had someone play act the ghost. Somebody he could trust. That lets you off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> well, Krieger is dead. You think he could have been the archer? If it wasn't Krieger's body in the garden, he has a twin brother. How are you going to get us out of this? I'm open for suggestions. Oh, he, he's coming down. He's coming down. Valerie, start talking. About what? Anything. Careful, the wall scones. Don't touch it. Don't worry. I've wondered over and over what this would be like, Mother. I dreamed of this moment. I didn't know what you looked like. I didn't even have a picture of you. I can hold them off 
some time with this. Good sport. Don't worry. I have something else in mind for you. My doctor says I have a thickening of the arteries, a weak heart, and might die any minute. No such luck. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to think I died before I finished my work. Private detectives snooping about, police moving in. I can't afford any, any delay. All Judas and me stole was a few lousy pounds. Yeah, you, you'd kill us for that. I mean, it's not fair. Come now, Julius. You knew about my weak heart. I figured that you and they cooked up this green archer mumbo jumper to scare me. Scare me to death. You're bonkers. Scare me. And take whatever money you can lay your hands on. Sidney knows how much money I keep on the premises. Plenty. Haven't you done enough? Is there no end to your cruelty? I'm not such a bad guy, Lenny. I got Lily out of the castle. Spike, too. And we're the same thing back on his way to Belgium. And I think you'll all find the dungeons very interesting. Is that what you're going to do? Walk us down there and pull off the police from the tower room? That would make an A1 story for Spike Hall. How many will Bellamy went out in the place of glory? Then I figured, what if no one really knew what happened here at Guard Castle? I'd be a bigger legend than the Green Archer. <laughs> Watching the police figure out what to do when they try to get in will be amusing. <laughs> Now get down those stairs. What if we say no? No, we'll, we'll go. We'll go. <laughs> <laughs> get down and wait, wait more. Move it. Move. <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Colster. You join the others. What? I told you. You're getting a notice. You're free to go. Down in the dungeon. I tell you no harm. What does that mean to me? In the old days, when they buried a king, they, they sacrificed a lot of his hired help. <coughs> we'll, 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 we'll starve to death. Die of thirst. You can't lock us in and leave us. I'm Abel Bellamy. I can do anything I want. I'm Abel Bellamy. In my regards to Relaine. <laughs> Done. Far enough, Bellamy. You couldn't have been in that tower room. I've studied this castle for months. The wall opens at the top of the stairs. Wood. Don't you know who I am? Uncle? You were, you were killed in that plane accident. Michael Bellamy Jr. was reported killed. We never set eyes on one another, Uncle. So I changed my name to throw you off. I wanted to search for Mother without you breathing down my neck again. I've made many trips back and forth from Belgium. I don't get it. Why? Why did she drop you with that phony newspaper advertisement? I wanted to be close to Valerie. I wanted to talk to the sister I'd never known, thanks to you. I still don't understand that get up Green Archer. To scare everyone out of the castle. I wanted to search through the stones alone. It could take a man a lifetime. And you know where your mother's prison is. Behind those books. Did Craig recognize you on the steps? He saw my face, frightened him so much he couldn't hold the gun steady. If I get done anything, the money can put right. Money? Could money buy back the eight years of torment you meted out of an innocent woman? Could money take away the marks of the lash on my skin? I'll give you something after your own heart. I'll give you back your lives. I know where to find them. Then you better hurry after your release poison gas. Second by second, it fills the dungeon. The scars, turn it back. The scars. Hurry. The red volume. Pull it. Hurry! They're dying! <laughs>
find the Babel Bellamy. The key to the tower room will be in this pocket. I have my daughter and my son back. Could anyone be happier? Spike Holland. He's got one fantastic story from the London Globe. <laughs> Stand up and take a bow to Sharon. Uh -huh.